What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave today. You hear about this big birria taco craze. Well, I'm not a big fan of the beef, so naturally I had to come up with my own chicken recipe, obviously. It's easy, I'm hungry, so let's get into it. So the base for this delicious taco is the sauce. And naturally, we have to start with our dried chilies. So I'm using these New Mexico chilies. Um, I, think, I think it's just basically an ancho chili and it has a medium heat level, not spicy whatsoever. Uh, but me being me, I obviously always want some heat in my eats. So these are totally optional, but this is a chile arbol. Yes, that is my very screwed up Spanish. Um, and that one happens to be a very hot uh, pepper. So if you don't like it to be, you know, too spicy, please don't feel like you have to use those. But I see a lot of times they're like ancho chilies and uh, uh, what is it? Girl, I'm turning these words up. Aguadillo chilies. I didn't use those. I just used this New Mexican chili and a chile arbol, and it was absolutely perfect for me. Um, I do know that having tried a few of the different beef birria tacos, some of them give me the taste of like pot roast. And like, I don't want pot roast on a taco shell. Or some of them are a little bit too bitter. And so that's why I simplify my recipe to just include two chilies. Um, and obviously we're gonna use some chipotle peppers. But back to the food. You wanna go ahead and make sure you remove all of the seeds. The seeds are what are going to keep the heat in any pepper, whether it's a fresh or a dried pepper. Um, so I'm removing the seeds from all of these and we're moving on to the next step. Once I've removed the seeds from the peppers, I'm gonna go ahead and add them into some boiling hot water for about 10 minutes until they are nice and soft. Of course, this is a tomato and pepper-based sauce, so I'm cutting up two fresh Roma tomatoes here. Just gonna dice those in big chunks and throw them into the blender. If you can't get fresh tomatoes, you can certainly use canned tomatoes. Please make sure they're in their natural juices. I prefer to use fresh tomatoes because I feel like their acidity definitely cuts down on some of the spiciness of the peppers. So I've gone ahead and thrown my tomatoes into the blender, and to that I'm going to add one cup of low sodium chicken broth. I don't play about high blood pressure, high blood pressure runs in my family, so if I'm cooking it, it's always going to be low sodium so I can control the salt. In addition to that, I'm going to add a seven and a half ounce can of chipotle peppers. Now I ended up using two cans of these chipotle peppers. Um, right now you're only gonna see me add in one. You can certainly add in both at this time. Once I pop those in, the, the peppers are actually in an adobo sauce, so I just filled that can with water and just tossed that additional water so I made sure I did not miss any of that delicious flavor. And lastly, we're going to add in a half of a medium yellow onion. So I went ahead and blended up all those ingredients that we put into the blender originally, and to that now, I'm going to add in those softened ancho chilies and chile arbol. You know, my Spanish is horrible. Y'all would not believe that I took four years of Spanish. Can't speak a lick of it. To this, we're gonna add in four cloves of fresh garlic. Please be sure to use fresh garlic and not that minced up canned stuff, okay? Add in four, uh, just a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon of fresh black pepper. Give this a blend and your sauce is done. It's time to cook the chicken. I have about a tablespoon of butter in here. I had some pretty large chicken breasts. I don't know what they're shooting these chicken breasts up with, but they were big. So I just cut mine in half so they could fit in the pan. I can cook them evenly, and I'm just gonna throw them on in and let them cook for about two minutes on this side. Notice I have added absolutely no seasoning to them at this point. Now y'all know I'm gonna have to season the chicken a little bit. I will not end up like a meme. Oh my God, the black girl that did not see her season her chicken. No, 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 sweetheart. We won't do that. We won't play. We won't play me like that. So I added in about two teaspoons of adobo just to cover each side of the chicken. I'm gonna give those a flip. I'm gonna add the adobo to this side as well. I'm actually, actually using the red label adobo. If you have the green label adobo, that one I believe has cilantro, and this one has cayenne pepper, that works totally fine. Don't add any additional salt to the chicken because 
you already have added salt into the sauce and the adobo has a good amount of salt in it. Please, please hold on to your heart. In addition to that, I'm going to add just one pack, actually it's a half a pack, of the orange sazon Goya seasoning. You can find both of these ingredients at your local grocery store, okay? I'm going ahead and adding in the other half of that yellow onion. I just thinly sliced mine, pop that in. You can dice it, you can slice it, you can flip it, you can reverse it. It's going to cook down into all of this deliciousness anyway. Now it's time for the main ingredients of the hour, the delicious sauce that we just made. Make sure you cover all of your chicken and that it is evenly coated and submerged under that sauce and cook it on a medium low for about an hour. If you are using a slow cooker, you can throw it in the crock pot for about two hours, um, but this is definitely a slow and steady dish. Add in some fresh cilantro, put the lid on and let it do what it's going to do. So once the chicken is officially done, because I definitely check on mine in between, you want to go ahead and time to, it's time to get ready to shred it. But first, we need to add in some more of the chicken broth. I'm going to add in, in total, I know that didn't look like a lot, but I added in a total of another cup of that chicken broth. Keep in mind, these tacos are meant to be dipped, so you want them to be a little saucy. And the sauce comes from the sauce that we're using to cut the chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and shred the chicken just using two forks. Um, some people sometimes put this in a food processor. I just don't want chicken pate. So I'm just gonna use two forks and shred that chicken. Y'all know, y'all done had a barbecue. Somebody's uncle puts a pig on the, on the grill at the end of the year for a cookout. Do the same thing with that, all right? Now, once my chicken is all evenly shredded, it should look a little something like this. Now, as you can see, I put my chicken, I try to push it off to one side of the pan because now we're going to collect all of that delicious sauce. You know, the birria tacos are what people, they go for these because they get to dip. I think it's like, ooh, I get to dip my taco. Ooh, and my taco is red. Ooh, and my taco is saucy. So, <laughs> we got to make sure that we have enough of this delicious sauce. Look at that sauce, y'all. Like... I'm over here remembering this, the flavors of this recipe right now, and I'm about to go back in the refrigerator and, and heat up some more because, yes, I had that much. Now, once you've scooped out all the sauce, or a good amount of the sauce, this is what everything should look like. Oh, we finally made it to assembly time. I know, I know these are flour tortillas, and I will be judged, but I had flour tortillas, so flour tortillas we're going to get used, okay? You can certainly use corn tortillas, and I think corn tortillas will give you a little bit more crispiness than mine did. I just left mine on the flat top a little bit longer. So how you make these, you want to make sure you dip it into the sauce. So again, you see all of my meat is kind of pushed to the side. I make sure the juices ran to one side of the pan, and I'm just saturating, literally saturating, my taco shells in this uh, delicious sauce that we've made. I didn't put any butter down. I should have put some butter down because they did start to stick. So I did go back and add a little butter to the pan and I actually re-dipped my tacos again. Yes, the taco shells. I went and re-dipped them again. So it is time to assemble this taco. I am speeding this up. Y'all know how to put a taco together, but I gotta give y'all some details on what I use. Duh, duh. So I'm using fresh mozzarella. You can certainly use queso fresco if you can find that. Um, I've seen some people use Asiago cheese, but mozzarella is what I had, so that's what I use. Use something that's nice and cheesy. Also keep in mind, you don't have to use cheese at all. On some of these tacos that I made myself, I didn't include cheese because obviously some people are a little lactose intolerant. I get it. So you're gonna let these get nice and crispy on that one side, and then you're going to flip them 
and reverse them, okay? Like I said before, the flour tortillas, um, they were a little bit more wet, so if you are going to use these, I can definitely say use the, using the corn tortillas are gonna probably give you a crispier shell. But look guys, other than that, this dish is ready to be devoured. All these tacos are everything. I'm not even playing, and it, it, it's so easy. Like, I omitted a lot of those additional things that a lot of the birria tacos say that they need, and they still are packed with so much flavor. I hope you enjoyed this recipe as much as I did, and until next time, thank you for cooking with me, Sierra P.